Well, welcome back to session two of Giovanni Sordo's Barolo Festa. And when we say Festa, we truly mean it. He's a Festa on his own with eight crews in front of us, uh, spread across what, half uh, a dozen five communes. communes. Five communes, yep. Five communes. Yeah. Some of the best names in, in, in the, geez, in, in Barolo, you see Perusi, Masolino, also got, got that. You've got Mon Provato. One of only a couple of producers, Roque de Castellano, Villero. Um, Ravero, which is really coming on strong. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've seen Vietti buy there in recent years. And oh, yeah. And, and compare the Riveras too. So you've got Rivera from Novello and Rivero from Monforte. But uh, let's, let's just break a little bit of, uh, about Barolo down for you. So Barolo, and we're going to have a couple of maps that will be inset, and you'll see those, and we'll work through those as we explore these wines. Barolo's broken up into 11 communes and, and the, the region of Barolo itself is about roughly 10 k's wide and 15 k's long. It's not huge. The Yarra Valley by context is 50 by 50 yeah. in kilometres. Yeah. Uh, Pro like... Produces about 12 million bottles a year, yeah. roughly. Yeah. yeah. In Barolo in a, in a good year, 12 million. Jeez, it's a, and that sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It's really not. Uh, particularly over that area, and that area is actually saturated with vineyard as opposed to Yarra oh, Valley, yes. which is it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. disparate. There's a yeah. lot of vineyard, but it's disparate. Well, hazelnuts are the only other crop that will grow, you know, in in the vicinity. Truffles? Uh, well, I suppose you call that a crop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but uh, I, I guess I guess the thing is that you've got uh, eleven communes. One of them confusingly also named Barolo. So you've got the region of Barolo with the commune of Barolo within it. And then you've got the other, other, uh, other 10 communes, which we'll, you'll see on the map. So I won't go through the whole lot right now. Um, yeah, back in 2010, I think it was, that they, they did a, a full the, reclassification. The of the crews, yeah. And all of yeah. the crews were marked out and delineated. And I think they did a fantastic job in Cerro Lunga, a fantastic job in Castiglione Filetto. Some of the other regions are perhaps a bit generous. And yeah, no, you I'll need stay to out of that. It's politics. And, and it, it is a bit of politics. The expansion but, of Canubi. Yeah, Canubi. Uh, yeah, that, there was that, almost a war over that yeah, one, I think. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. So Canubi is one of the, the famed crews, and uh, there was a few people with lesser parts of uh, vineyard near Canubi that wanted to be plugged into it, and others that said, no, 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 we can't have that. But that's a, another long, long story. But um, what we've seen, I guess, is really a, a push uh, for crew wines to start coming out of Barolo, single vineyard wines to be, be coming out of Varolo and, and really clear delineation between the parts of the vineyard they come from um, and, and, and the vineyard itself. And we're seeing that here in these wines with eight crews. It does, I guess, beg that debate around whether we, we should have single, single vineyard wines or whether we should have blended vineyard wines. I'm going to sum that up and we're going to move straight on from it, that as long as the wine is good, I don't care. Yeah. And I guess the only extension on that is that you get to really, with a crew wine, see a very, I guess, pure expression of a particular site. Um, and it, it may not necessarily make it better than a blended wine, but um, they, can, they can both be just as good. Mm. Um, this exercise will, will be one of the answers. If, if, if they look like they're, all, they're we, shaping up we doing blending all individual, we're going to uh, we can do, we can do <laughs> that. Have, actually, have not done that. Well, that's it. You're coming you can back. You imagine how many it. tastings that, that I've left where there's, there's a whole heap of wine still. Yeah, and Why that, not blend them? Yeah, we'll just grab a thousand bucks of wine and play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, on the order that I've yep. got them in, so, so they're, they're generally speaking more approachable, softer, as, uh, as, and as you go along the line, they get yep. tougher and tougher. Yep. As people look at the map, and here's the readiest, the easiest ready reckoner I can ever give for yep. how to understand the style and why you know people talk about more tannin and different types of tannin. Every commune, w w you know, if you take part in such childish pursuits as mass tastings, yep. you know, who would do such a no, thing? I, I never do you, it. You know, you can tell. <laughs> You can tell Montfort from Serralunga, from uh, La Mora, from yep. Castiglione for sure. Partly because of their aromatic profile, but almost yep. certainly because of their their tannins, yeah. if if they're characteristic. Yep. Um, and and so those tannins have a you know have a different punch, if you like. So we've got them generally yep. lined up. As you look at the map, if you like, if you draw a diagonal line going from the right hand top of the map, a little yep. bit skewed, 
a diagonal, you're basically chopping it into two halves. They're not yep. exact, of course. Ge yep. ge geology never yep. is. Is that, is that the word for soil? Yeah, 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 geology never is. On the left hand side, you've got what they call Tortonian yep. soil. Uh, generally speaking, it's almost agricultural. Yep. Almost, you know, it's, it's richer, it's, it's marine mud effectively, yep. uh, marl. Yep. Um, and on the right hand side, you've got what they call Helvetian soil yep. in, the, in the Serralunga. So you've got the Barolo Valley and the Serralunga Valley, more yep. or less. Yep. They actually meet in the middle of Barolo Commune, yeah, well. again, more or less. And, mm. and, and the Kanubi is almost dissected yep. in, in a way by, by this, where uh, on the left hand side, that generosity of soil leads to a generosity of wine. Yep. and a softer nature of tannins. And as you move to the right, where that soil gets much leaner and only hazelnut trees will grow, apart yep. from grapes, and you've, you've got it more dotted through with sand, um, uh, lo actual limestone, yep. and, and mud, yep. clay, clay. Yep. And so, you know, where, where uh, uh, clay uh, appears in a vineyard like Perno or in, in Montfort or, you know, Serralunga, you yep. get these really fascinating differences. Yep. But in general, once you draw that line, that's where you see the softer and the tougher wines. Wow. I good, am, way to, good way to understand I'm it. I'm stoked to hear that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw on a map and then I'm going to send it to you and say, is this right? Yeah, <laughs> so you see sort of Verduno. On that side, you've got Verduno and Novello, top and bottom of, yep. of that map. Yep, yep. And then over this side, you've got the left-hand side of Barolo. You've got yep. uh, Gr Grinzana Cavour and the, the other communes. And yep. you've got uh, La Mora as the biggest and softest of the communes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Barolo is sort of half and half. Yep. As you get over to the right where Castellero yep. is, for example, yep. you're actually actually getting into Castiglione, Folletto and Montfort. Yep, yep, yep. Castellero sits right on the, the cusp. Yep, 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 yep. So it, it, that, that's what you've got, this progressive change to, to ferocity yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. soil over that side. So we're just about to see it. Yeah, and we're, we, I think we're about to see it. So if yeah. we're just... Is it worth just giving these a sniff first and then sort of making some comments on it, or is it just good to just smash uh, them and taste them as we go? Yeah, yeah no, the sniff, because... Because <clears throat> there are things you're going to recognise and things yep. you're going to relate to and things that you're going to say, that's my type of Barolo. Yep. Um, yes, the, the sniffing is the way to go, first of all, with them, for sure. The problem is my type of Barolo is anything that's good. <laughs> I know. And that's what you'll find every time we do a tasting, there's a, there's a room favourite of the day. But you, if you did the same thing with the same people tomorrow, they'll, they'll pick a different wine. Wow. There is one that comes up time and time again of these in, in all three vintages I've shown widely, 13, 14 and 15. Yeah. There is one of the wines that comes through as everybody's favourite every time, yeah. serious or whether they're... Oh, I'm wondering whether I've hit it already. <laughs> uh, you... You don't have to tell me, don't tell no, me. Don't no, tell you, me. You, tell you. You, you have seen it. Yeah. yeah. Because that Valero on the nose... Yeah, well, that's, just, my, that's my pick. It's insane. Yeah, it's my pick. Insane. And Rocca di Castiglione is, is generally speaking, the winner yep. time after time. Yeah. The trade, the trade particularly go for Gabuti because it's got that, you know, the, the smoke and the meat stock and the toughness of black tea tannins. So it, it, all sorts of people have all sorts of favourites. You, you, you almost advised me to, well, I follow what you, you said and, and I put Perussi here because yep. it is a, ju a bigger, juicier, more voluminous wine, but I normally have it earlier in the in the piece. I, yeah. just, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know where to start. I, I, the only thing that I, that, that I would say, in, I don't know where to start because I'm a bit flabbergasted. Um, because there is, this is such a lovely set of wines. Just, just I, wines and just as, as well-made wines, yeah. I could just smell those for the next 10 minutes. Yep. I don't even need to dig into them because there's, there's such differences going on in the in the, the lift, there's a couple of wines that are quite tightly coiled at the moment, but you can see them brooding and ready to explode. Yeah. There's other wines that have got the immediate perfume. Um, so, so you've got your call on which wine is your wine now and you, which wine will be the wine in five years. Um, they're, they're probably two different calls, but calling a spade a spade, it's... Uh, no, it will change. Wow. The, the, all, all of those views can change doing this eight, these eight wines. I've done it a few times and, you know, you change, your favourite changes. Yeah. Um, time after time. I mean, they're all made essentially identically. Yeah. Um, the, the, I guess what you're looking at is the, 
the terroir speaking. You know, it's like yeah. Chablis without oak. These and wines have got no oak to speak of. You know, it's yeah. all 50 and 120 hectolitre large Slavonian, completely neutral. Yeah. So that's 5,000 and 2,500 litre barrels or botti, uh, as they call them in, in Italy, compared to what has traditionally been the case in Australia, and we're shifting away from a little bit, which is Barrique at 225 litres, Hogsheads at 300 litres, and then we're seeing a lot more use now and shifting away from Barrick to punchins of 500 litres. But we've talked about that in an article in the Wine Bites mag around oak and what actually new oak and new oak percentage is. So have a, have a look at that article to get your head around that. But basically, big oak means less impact of oak, and I'd imagine they're all old as well, so there's, there's going to be absolutely yeah. no sort of real new oak character, except when they need to renew one. Um, well, these winemakers knew already, they didn't need to change to new oak 30 years ago, as, as almost all of us did, and lots of people in this area 30, 30 35 years ago, yep. and go through that crude, clumsy period, yep. of which a few haven't come out of yet. Um, you know, of, of wines yep. that smelled of vanilla and coconut and, yep. you know, too much cedar. Oh, and that aggressive texture. You know, yeah. that's... There's no... I, can, I see no oak in there. The purpose of wood, as yeah. Max Schubert, for example, always knew with, with Penfolds, was not so much to give it aromatics and stuff. It was to it was an, a controlled oxidative mechanism. Yeah. I yep. mean... Yeah, because yeah. barrels are permeable. So you get a little bit of liquid going out and a little bit of air or oxygen coming in and that oxidation process is critical to developing a wine and that elevage and taking it through puberty. And when the bigger the barrel, typically the thicker the staves, the slower the rate of oxidation. And so that's why you can hold a Barolo in a, in a body for such an extended period yeah. of time before you take it into bottle. And that slow prog progressive oxidation also allows them to see what occurs without oxidation and that natural sort of harmonisation of a wine and the, the sort of the, the wine resolving and coming together. Yeah. So. And they start their life, they start their life with that traditional approach too. These wines are, are fairly long macerations. Mm. You know, they're, they're up to seven weeks, roughly. Yeah. Uh, all yep. of them. Um, so that's uh, 50 days, you know, roughly, the, the, the time yep. the, 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 the solids are in touch with the juice. Yep. Extracting all of this character and, of course, a lot of tannin then needs to be dealt with. By, but it's, by... it, it also allows that tannin to soften by having that extended maceration. We see that in most, most, if not all, varieties. If you have ripe tannins and you allow an extended maceration, you'll see tannins starting to soften and lengthen as well. And you'll see some perfume coming out of the wine as a result of that extended maceration. And there's, there's certainly a, a trend here through of, of, of great purity of fruit and some perfume at different levels coming through in these wines. Uh, these, is, these are insane. I, <laughs> I, don't I, knew, know. I knew they'd have an effect for sure. They are having a massive effect. Yeah. I just want to do it with whole bottles with a group of people now. It's um, like uh, looking at, at eight Grand Cru burgundies. It all, is, all absolutely, absolutely. And do you know what? It's, it's rare that I've had a suite of uh, Barolo, and if you have a look at the Barolo dinners that I've been to, we're talking verticals of pretty much every top-end producer, horizontals of vintage. To have a set that is showing such purity, such vibrancy, that is together, that is beautifully made, obviously 15's nothing's fallen over yet, but just to have You'd hope not. that level of consistency uh, across the range is, in, is, is insane. Um.